Earlier this year, we bought this abandoned boat for $57,000 and in this video, you'll see the rest of the projects that we did to turn this new home of ours into a $225,000 valuation just five months later. Our future plan is to sail this boat to Alaska and from there through the Northwest Passage to Greenland, but for now, watch this video to see how we finish the refit and how our new home is suddenly worth so much. We continued preparing for the arrival of the welder by grinding off the location for the new chip tracks. All the locations for the new welds have to be cleaned down to bare aluminum. We also wanted to have the welder modify the hard dodger, so that meant cutting off a large part of it. Not really helping with the dodger modification were my super crappy Chinese hole saw and the $20 jigsaw. In the end, the cut came out pretty good, especially considering the tools used. It took us well over two weeks to prepare everything for the welding, including a lot of grinding inside the boat, which you might have seen in our previous videos. And then, when our welder Charlie showed up, we got to the actual work. Charlie first welded shut the 14 through hulls that we are not going to need, because our boat is not going to have any through hulls at all. He welded this with a MIG welder from the inside and with a TIG welder from the outside. We ran after Charlie and tried to protect him and the welding process from the wind as best as we could. We went on to weld on the six new handrails, three on each side of the boat. And after the handrails, we welded shut the two unnecessary hatches on top of the hard dodger. We didn't need these hatches and wanted to place solar panels here instead. The new jeep tracks also had to go in. And after the jeep tracks, Charlie welded in some tabs to hold down the new battery bank along with the special watertight compartment for the transducer. Not pictured here is the reinforcement for the anchor roller and the new standpipe system. The welding itself only took two days and this was the first big project on our list that we fully completed. And it is at this point that I have to speed up the video even more because I damaged the hard drive that contained the footage for the rest of the refit. So I lost about one terabyte of footage and I only have uh, what was left on my other hard drives and what I had as backups. The old wiring and the AC and the DC panels were not really that great and a good electrical system is really crucial for an aluminum boat. So I decided to rip out mostly everything, starting with the batteries. I took the old batteries out and relocated the battery banks to better positions. The main bank is now a Mastervolt MLI lithium bank. I then put in a new Mastervolt system layout with new main DC bus, new switches, two new special DC panels and a new charger, inverter and two new alternators and of course tens of meters of wiring. Let's go onto the engine compartment then. 
First, I took out the engine-driven and not very functional refrigeration compressor. There we go! The refrigeration heat exchanger was not needed anymore, so I took that one out as well. I also took out and relocated the water strainer. There we go! I put in two new alternators, this one in the place where the compressor used to be. Of course I also changed a bunch of hoses and did a few oil changes. Then I went on to replace the engine control cables and the throttle lever. Ta-da! It's done! It's beautiful, right? I accidentally nearly destroyed the propeller shaft, but luckily managed to repair the threads and put the whole thing back together along with a new coupless bearing and a new propeller shaft seal. After that I of course aligned the engine and the drivetrain. Meanwhile Sohvi was busy making new floors for around 10 of the locker compartments. The old floors were in pretty bad shape and pretty badly made and we knew we could do better. The new ones are made of plastic, so they are impervious to moisture and are easily removable to inspect the hull underneath. You are officially the master interior carpenter. Good job! <laughs> well, it took a while. <laughs> the epoxy paint on the rear daggerboard was not looking too good, so Sohvi sanded that down to bare aluminum. With some help from our friend Jess, they also sanded down the whole bottom to remove the old anti-fouling. All of the outside painting was also mostly done by Sohvi, but it's not pictured here. Our friend Arni showed up with his sewing machine and set up shop under the boat. Ready to do the final fit and see if it works. <laughs> First I need a sip of my beer. Yeah. <laughs> he made us a new mainsail cover and even more importantly a fancy backfall for the new hard dodger. With the mast being on the ground we first overhauled the mast head which was covered in bird poop and looked pretty rough. We removed all the unnecessary items and installed new antennas and Raymarine wind instruments and a camera. We also ran new wiring through the whole mast and changed all the mast lights. This water here, come on! Even with all the projects going on, we didn't forget about our animal friends that hung out at the boatyard. Californian summer is too hot and dry, not only for us, but for the geese and the ducks as well. Anyway, back to the mast, we replaced the whole running rigging and standing rigging, and with the old rigging being incorrect lengths, we had to cut all the rigging to the correct size on the spot and install the lower terminals ourselves. Really quite a big job to figure it all out. We also assembled two new Selden furlers. Huge thanks to Selden for their support and technical help during the rigging project. Once we felt like we were close to getting ready to splash, we called in the travel lift to lift the boat up so we could install the rudder. The previous rudder was stolen, so this was the first time that this brand new rudder was installed on this boat, but after a bit of swearing, it luckily fit in perfectly. Then it was time to put on the new name. We named her Lumi which is Finnish for snow. Me and Sohvi couldn't really agree whether to put her or my hometown as the home port, so for now the home port is the whole Finland. Now we were ready to splash. So when we were ready to kind of move the boat into water and splash her, we called in the insurance surveyor, he came in and he valued the boat at $225,000. He wrote a 15 or a 20 page report and he deemed the boat to be seaworthy, which, is, which was good. 
So now some of you might think, hey, you bought the boat for 57k and now it's suddenly worth 225k. Um, that's easy money, you know, let's just buy some abandoned crappy boats and flip them and, um, and we'll be rich in no time. Well, there are a few problems with this and let me just go through those. First of all, of course, is that we spent a huge amount of money on the refit and you know we basically spent all of our life savings plus then some and we definitely spent more than we budgeted in the in the beginning and I don't have the exact number right now because um, we didn't really keep good count we really didn't really keep tabs on it because we figured we're kind of doing this for our selves and you know it wasn't like I don't know we are just not so good with um, budgeting and uh, keeping you know making financial reports and so on so I just I can just tell you that it was you know we put in a lot of money which you probably already guessed from you know all of the new equi equipment that we put in then second second thing is that we put in a huge amount of hours. Um, what was not shown on these videos were like the numerous other projects that were completed off camera or that were completely lost when I um, managed to destroy the uh, hard drive. And those projects, you know, for example, I don't know, we made a new base plate, a compression plate for the mast, we took apart the uh, anchor winch refurbished it took apart the feathering propeller disassembled refurbished assembled it back put in a new gray water system and couple of pumps and I don't know check the propane system installed new propane lines new propane solenoid all kinds of stuff on top of these really big projects you know the really big projects were the elect electrical system and the rig and just overhauling the engine and sails and the windows which were in the previous video so there were a lot of big projects but, but there were numerous smaller projects and there were two of us working on the boat for five months straight for 8 to 14 hours per day and uh, even before we began with the actual boat work um, I spent several weeks on my laptop just researching things and planning the projects and even during the work at the boat yard you know when we got home I would go and sit at my laptop for a couple more hours just to order things online and research things again so a huge amount of hours and uh, that's not to be underestimated. One thing that you can't see in these videos is that there were two of us working the whole time. You know, Sophie was working full time on her PhD, but she was also at the same time working full time on the boat as well. And that's something you might not notice in these videos, but two of us um, put in um, a lot of lot of hours. And if you put any amount of um, value on your own hours then you know that would become quite a big sum and it becomes obvious that if you if we had paid professionals to do these jobs then it certainly would not have been worth it then the third problem is the is the valuation itself so in the surveyor he valued the boat at 225 obviously he looked at the um, at the um, completed sales of the same model boats um, in the recent years and these boats are quite highly valued in the second hand market especially in in Europe and that's how he came up with the valuation but even then I think that the valuation was a little bit too high I don't think that we'd be able to sell this boat for 225 right now we still have some projects to do and the boat is still you know it's still a little bit rough around the edges and so on 
so I think that was just a little bit too high of a valuation and we actually insured the boat for less um, also also because um, of the high cost of the insurance you know insurance is just extremely expensive right now so in the end I still think that it's not really usually worth it to buy a, buy this kind of a boat that you have to put a lot of work and money into it's mostly makes sense to buy a boat that's as ready to go as possible I think YouTube gives like a really wrong impression of um, boat buying and boat projects because there's just so many uh, so many YouTube channels around where you know people buy uh, boats that are in crap condition and fix them up and while this is certainly possible I don't think it's usually worth it not it's not worth it financially um, it's probably cheaper to buy a boat that's um, ready to go and also it's not worth it um, unless you really enjoy doing boat projects so while this project you know we I'm quite proud of like what we accomplished in such a short amount of time like just looking at the list of things that we did it's just really incredible that we managed to pull all of this through in just four and four or five months but I still I still probably wouldn't do it again uh, <laughs> I'm glad that it's done but I probably wouldn't do it again and I just don't want to lead people into thinking that buying a project boat is a good investment or a good way to start sailing actually I don't think that's true at all for most people um, it makes more sense to um, buy a boat that's ready to go but for us this project made sense in the way that this was exactly the kind of boat we were looking for and we were kind of able to leverage the skills and things that we've learned during the last few years of um, sailing and living and working on boats so having said all of that I know that uh, in this video you didn't really get a good overview of the boat but in the future videos I will do a boat tour and probably going to do a separate um, technical tour as well and um, for now I hope you enjoyed this one and the next one we're gonna splash the boat and then hopefully sail under the Golden Gate Bridge and turn right meaning towards the north and towards Alaska and the Northwest Passage I'll see you all next time and remember to you know, subscribe, Patreon, whatever, the usual things. Bye-bye.